Hi everyone, it's Monday, the start of yet another week, but it does look as if some changes are in sight, doesn't it? So we've got lots to hold on to, which is really hopeful. So I'm just going to do a super quick cooking video today. Now I know year six is, I think you've got a pirate theme going on this week. So we are going to make some pirate pot pies. <laughs> Um, there's quite a few parts to this, which is why it's going to be a little bit of a disjointed video, but hopefully it makes sense. Now the first part, as always, make sure you've asked your grown-ups permission. We always need to make sure that they are there to help and supervise us uh, when we need it. Please make sure that your oven has already heated up, so it needs to be about 180 degrees gas mark 4 as normal. And make sure you've washed your hands thoroughly. And I'm going to do my usual, which is to anti-back my hands. It popped out the end then. Right. Let's give these a good thorough wipe through. Have you had a fabulous weekend? What have you all been up to? Hopefully there's been lots of arts and crafts going on. I know somebody's going to try and make a fish this weekend because I spoke to them on Friday and they were going to try and make a swimming fish, which will be fabulous. So to make this a little bit quicker for you to watch, I've already weighed out the ingredients for the short crust pastry. So let me turn this down and you can have a little look at what's going on. Now these ingredients, this side of what we're going to put in the pie later on, but we're going to start off with the ingredients for the short crust. So you need 225 grams of plain flour, you need 100 grams of butter and you need a pinch of salt. So I've already weighed that out and that is inside my bowl. And all I'm going to do now is mix it up so it makes a dough. Now we remember when we made this before that sometimes you might need a little bit of water. If it's not quite moist enough, you might need a little bit of water just to form the final parts of the dough. So we'll see what happens with that. Now I've had quite a busy weekend. I've had lots of my schoolwork to do that I was telling you about. So not my work for school that we all go to, but my work for university. So I've been getting on with that. Have you been getting on with any of your schoolwork or do you give yourselves the weekends off? I know I spoke to somebody today who is working very hard on a pirate word search, I believe which sounds thoroughly exciting. I was trying to think what words would I associate with pirate and I was thinking telescope, eye patch, parrot, um, hook, maybe a hook. So all of those things are things that we would associate with a pirate. Maybe a big ship, and walking the plank. Anyone seen the film Hook? That's quite a good film to think about pirates, isn't it? Or Pirates of the Caribbean, that's another one. So all I'm doing whilst I'm chatting is mixing the butter into the flour. And this can be quite a tedious, quite an annoying process. And one that makes all your joints ache. But it's worth it in the end. Cold butter always works a little bit better than warm butter. And what we're looking for is that we're going to change the colour of the flour so it becomes more golden. And we're looking for it to be breadcrumb type material. Material. Consistency. Don't know why I'm saying material. Because I'm thinking of what I'm going to make for arts and crafts tomorrow. And quite sticky when you squeeze it. Don't forget to go right down to the bottom of the bowl and pick up the flour that sometimes rests at the bottom. Right, so we are almost there. Now you can see it's still quite breadcrumby. If I turn the bowl, I've just found some bits of butter that I want to mix in. Woo! Just poured it all over the side of the table. That's not very clever, is it, Mish? Just scoop that back up and pop that back in. So if you have a look, can you see it's kind of breadcrumby, but it's still, if you cut, uh, squeeze it in your hands, still goes into a bit of a ball. So this tells me I need to add one to two tablespoons of water. So I'm just going to go and do that from the tap. It needs to be cold water so it doesn't melt the butter. So let's add one to two tablespoons of water. 
tablespoons of cold water and we're going to mix that in and that should give us the dough that we're looking for. Now when we've got the dough, the dough needs to be part baked for this so we need to pop it in the oven just for about 10 minutes so that it can get a little bit cooked on the bottom and then when we put the ingredients in on top it won't go all soggy. Mary Berry is very famous for calling it the soggy bottom so if you've ever watched Great British Bake Off you'll see they never want a soggy bottom on their pies or anything that's made out of pastry because it doesn't go crisp. Now this recipe you can change to make a sweet filling if you like. I'm doing a savoury one today because it's nearly my tea time so I'm going to eat these for my tea. So I'm doing a savoury one but you can change it and make it into a sweet one by using chocolate. If you look up chocolate tort you can add in um, the sweet recipe from the chocolate tort filling and add that into the middle of your pies. So what we've got now is our dough. I'm just going to make sure that it's completely combined and then what I also forgot to get out which was really silly of me was my rolling pin. Do you remember last time I've got that really silly little rolling pin I cannot find the big one anywhere so I'm going to have to get out my really silly little rolling pin so I apologise now but it doesn't matter it still does the job doesn't it? Right, let's have a little look. Here it is. Here's my little rolling pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll out this dough. And remember this is called short crust pastry dough. And there's lots and lots of really simple recipes for these on the computer. Now what I might need to do whilst I'm looking at that, it's sticking to the surface now that I'm rolling it out. So I'm just going to put some flour down so that as I roll it, hopefully it doesn't stick. So we need to make sure that it's rolled, not too fat and not too thin because we're going to put it into our little pastry cases in a minute. Now what I've got to use, which often helps, you can either do small ones which are like cupcake case size or you can do slightly larger ones which are a bit more like a muffin case. So I've got muffin cases just like the ones you get like these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out some dough and then when it's thin enough we don't want it too thick that it's going to be stodgy like gooey when we eat it and we don't want it too thin that once we've put it in it breaks and all the filling comes out so it's quite a tricky match to get. So I'm only going to do two of them because otherwise I think you're all going to be bored out of your brains as you watch me. Now this is what happened last time wasn't it? Do you remember it was a little bit crumbly but the beauty is that we can stick all these little bits back together before we cut it out. So we are nearly there. We've rolled out our pastry and the next thing we're going to do is cut some circles. Now I found a glass that is roughly the same size as the top of the um, dish. So I know that my circle that's got to go in the dish has got to be bigger than this. So I'm going to use this as a bit of a guide. So I know the circle I put in has got to be bigger than that circle because otherwise it won't fill the sizes at the sides, sorry, of my muffin tray. So I'm going to do one and then I'll stop the video before I do the others or it is literally going to bore you to tears. So let me try and move this over. What I might do is move the camera slightly across which will make life easier for you to see. I might do this this way. So I've cut out the circle, so what I'm going to do now, I've pre-greased it, so inside there, I am going to make this a little bit thinner because I think the pastry is a bit thick, sorry guys, we want it to work don't we, 
So I have pre-greased the middle bit, so I've put some oil in, and all you do is very gently, this is where you have to have your very gentle hands, you're just going to put the pastry in like that. It doesn't matter if it goes additional over the sides, that's fine. Okay, and we're just going to mould it in, so press it in around the sides of your muffin tin. Now this is why you don't want it too thick, because obviously some bits of this are going to double over. And once you've got it in and all pressed round the sides nicely, I feel like I need to sing to you so you don't get bored. There we go. So we don't want any cracks and we don't want it to be too thick around the sides. Once you've done that, you can just cut off the tops around the edge of the circle as you go. There we are. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other ones without you having to be bored to tears watching it. And then I will come back to you. I'm going to pop these in the oven. They're going in for about 10 minutes just to cook basically before we put the filling in. So I will put them in the oven for about 10 minutes and then I will come back to you so that we can make the filling, fill them out and move on with the next bit. Right, I will see you momentously. Hang on, hang on. Hello, welcome back. So I've put four um, little bits of pastry into those pots. So this pastry is going to make four of those little pies. Now what I've done with the spare pastry is I've put that all back together and I've rolled that out again. And what I'm gonna do now, using a glass very, very gently, you've probably got pastry cutters at home. I haven't got a pastry cutter. So I'm going to use a glass, but I'm going to be very, very careful with it. You cannot push hard. This is something you need a grown-up to help you with to make sure that it's done very, very gently. So this glass, the end of this glass, is the same circle, same circumference as the circle on top of the muffin pie um, case. So I need four of these. So I'm just going to very gently push down to make four because our pies need little lids on. So very carefully, I'm going to push down so that I've got four of those. And that's what I need for my little um, pie tops. So there's one. I'm going to try and keep some of this flat pastry for the next bit. There's two. There's three. Let's see if I can cut that bit out there. We need the flat bit to make the next bit. And there's four. Okay, so there's my little tops. Now when they come out of the oven, I'm just gonna put the filling in and I'll just gently place those on top and they'll seal as they go. Now the other thing we want to do is, I'm going to try if I can. Now if you have a look very carefully, I'm using quite a sharp knife. So again, something that you might need your grown-ups help with. And I'm just going to make because they're pirates, we're going to make a little eye patch out of the pastry. Now what you can do for this is get some egg. If you whisk up a little bit of egg, you can stick these onto the top of your pastry with egg. Alright, so it just can go on the top like that. Then that's a little eye patch and it makes your pirate pastry pots. Okay. I'm just going to do mine like that because I actually don't have any egg in the house so I can't use it but if I press it down gently that'll do so we need four of those so again I'm going to pause the video so you haven't got to watch me cut those out and then I'll come back to you for the next bit I told you it's a bit of a long one this one okay I'm back so in the meantime I have put the pastry in the oven now it's just come out so remember again you need a grain up to help you with that getting it out so it's very hot so i've put the pastry in the oven and it's cooked for roughly 10 minutes so oh look you can see the flour all over my tummy um so it's nice and firm but it's not fully cooked because obviously it's got to go back in once we've mixed the filling in now the other thing i've done is i have cooked some potatoes and some carrots so i've just put them into tiny little cubes like this 
I've cooked them for about 10 minutes, uh, just boiled them, and I'm going to add them in. Now, this was to show you that I'd cut up some carrot. I've also cut up some onion, so that's in there as well. I've got some tomato that I'm going to add in. So that's going to go in the bowl. Oops, let's not squash my little pastry things. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper because sometimes you need it to have just that little bit of seasoning. I'm going to add the very smallest amount of salt, just a little pinch because corned beef is actually quite salty. Now, obviously, there's lots of other options you can have to put into the middle of this. But I've chosen corned beef today to make it slightly different. And corned beef is quite an easy thing to use, easy thing to get hold of, and it lasts quite a while in your cupboard. And the other thing I'm going to do is just add in about half a tablespoon of tomato puree, just to make sure that we've got some little bit of moisture just to mix it all together with. And then the last thing I'm going to do, now this is another thing you're going to need your grown-ups help with. Corned beef tins are notoriously difficult for getting the corned beef out of. Whoever devised them or designed them in this way, I'm not really sure of. So I couldn't actually open it with the key like you normally would, so I've had to use a tin opener. And then what you're supposed to do is give it a little bit of a jiggle gently around the edges. Remembering this bit around the top is going to be very sharp, that's why you need a grown-up to help you. And in theory, ta -da, it should just pop out like that. So what we're going to do with the corned beef, now corned beef can be quite slimy to look at. I don't always like using corned beef, but it doesn't matter. We overcome these hurdles, don't we? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into thin little cubes. Looks and smells remarkably like dog food. <laughs> I guarantee you it's not. And it is del absolutely delicious when it's cooked up like this. So I'm going to cut it all up into little thin cubes. I'm going to mix it into our mixture. Now we've definitely got more mixture in here than is going to fit into my um, pastry cases and that's absolutely fine because what I'm going to do is put it in the fridge and I'm going to save it for tomorrow and then I can make some pasties or I could do like a corned beef hash where you just fry up the remains. Now these are really good things that I used to have quite a lot of when I was a child it's the sorts of things my mum would have cooked for me so we're going to mix all of this in together now what I do like to try to do if I can is make the corned beef less cube like because then it kind of incorporates the rest of the ingredients better it's a bit more pushed in more mushed is that a good word to use mushed but what I don't want to do is mush the um, potatoes or the carrots either because that's then going to be a bit of a gooey mixture that we're not particularly looking for. So I'm just going to press down the corned beef. Now we don't often do recipes like this, do we, with all of these component parts. Component parts being all the little bits that you need to do before it actually works. So it's quite nice to do something a bit more challenging. And hopefully some of you are trying this at home and it's not just a way of keeping me occupied <laughs> during this lockdown. So what we want to make sure we do is mix all of the ingredients together so that when you then put them into your um, pastry cases, <gasps> they're all combined and you haven't just got a pastry case with carrots or a pastry case with tomatoes because that would be quite bland wouldn't it so what I do know is the onions were right underneath in this so I'm going to make sure that I mix right down to the bottom of the bowl the other thing is because I only put a little bit of tomato puree in I want to make sure that that's got all the way through the mixture and it's not just going to be in one person's um, pie because that would be again a very dull bland pie to be eating so it looks to me as if we're there now remembering that these cases have just come out the oven so hopefully they're not hot now because I've allowed them some time to cool while I've been mixing all this together 
And there we are. So now what we're going to do, let me get rid of these bits. Is we're just going to fill. Yep, all cooled down. So we're just going to fill these pastry cases. Now remembering the mixture is going to bubble a little bit as it cooks. So we don't want to fill them too high, but at the same time, we want them high enough that it's going to get to the top of the pastry case. There we are. So you can squish it down a little bit so it fills the insides. That now it's so hot. It'll be easier to squash in. Now go very careful that you don't break the pastry that you've just cooked because that will be a little bit crumbly now it's in there. Let me put that in. Oh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a squidge down. Remembering we've got our little pirate pastry toppers to go on top. Now what I am going to do with those is to get just a little bit of water to put around the, the top edge of this cooked pastry to hold the little pastry tops on, otherwise you might find that they don't stick and then when you try to get them out it won't work. Okay that bit of carrot needs to squish down in, there we go. Okay, so they're nice and full. Now what you can see is around, I've left the pastry around the edge. If I tip this up, can you see I've left the pastry around the edge? All right, so that's there and that's nice and um, ready for me to just put some water into a cup and put the pastry toppers on. And then what we're going to do, because the filling is actually already pre-cooked, it doesn't need very long. If we put it in for too long, it'll burn in the middle. So we're just going to put them in the oven. Once we've finished this last little bit, we'll pop them in the oven for between 15 and 20 minutes. But you can keep a check on them just until the pastry is a nice golden brown colour. So put some water onto the end of your finger. And we're just going to dab it round on the top edges of the pastry that's already there. Just to moisten that up. And you can pop it around on the inside edge of your pastry case. And then we're just going to pop that on the top. Now if you press it very gently, you can make it meet the edges of the pastry that's already in there. And then you do need, where's that knife gone? You do need to give it just a couple of little pokes. Now if you do it in the nose area, you can do a couple of little pokes that go through into the pie because you need the air to be able to escape out so that it doesn't pop the lid off. Otherwise you're gonna have a little lid that pops off the top of the pastry. So we need to do that with all of these. And then like I said, we're gonna pop them in the oven for between uh, 15 and 20 minutes. I can let you know once I've done it, I can let you know how long mine took. But I reckon golden brown is going to be about 15 minutes. So we're going to make two little nose holes, let the air out. Oops, a little eye patch came off. Let's use some water to stick my eye patch back on. So on goes the water, a little bit like glue isn't it, egg also works, egg probably works better to be fair and you can then put a little bit of egg on the top of each one of these and it just helps to crisp the pastry up a little bit but like I said I haven't got any egg today so we're going without and you'll see that it'll work anyway. So let's pop that lid on. Make the little holes and then we're on to the final one. Now I did actually have quite a bit of pastry left over so if I'd rolled it out properly I probably could have made at least one more pie, maybe two. So that's a good thing to remember and it's quite a cheap and easy recipe to make. 
so you can make quite a few good little snacks for you to have when you get hungry after you've done all your school work in the day there we go let's make the two little holes for the nose and we are done so there are our little pirate pastry pot pies I'm going to pop them in the oven like I said and I will come back to you in about 15-20 minutes when they're cooked and ready to go. Ta -da! It's beeping. I don't quite know what they look like yet because I haven't had a look. The dog isn't too happy so I'm sorry he's barking along. He doesn't like the beeper going off. So I'm going to go and get them. Let's have a look at what they, they have finally turned out like. I mean it smells good. They are bubbling away. So there you have it. I'll tip that down a bit. Can you see them? These are our pirate pot pies. And they are ready and bearing to go. And I'm literally going to have one for my tea. So I hope they don't burn me. Remember to ask a grown-up to help you get them out of the oven. Use something to protect your hands. And make sure that when you've got it out of the oven, you push it towards the back of the surface in case you've got any little fingers that are reaching up. They might burn their hands. Good luck. Let us know how you get on if you do it. And I will see you again tomorrow for an arts and crafts video. It may well also be pirate themed. Keep your eyes out.